quality versus quantity, which is more important for the purposes of building muscle and gaining strength? Is it better to do less high quality training or will more training result in greater gains even if it comes at the expense of quality? First, we need to define what these terms mean with reference to resistance training. Training quantity is fairly simple to define. It refers to the total amount of work completed within a workout or throughout the entire week. In most cases, the most convenient and practical way to quantify workload is via the total number of sets performed for a muscle group per week, often referred to as volume. So the question is, how does volume influence muscle growth and strength gains? The best evidence we have on this topic comes from this meta-regression which aimed to analyse the relationship between total weekly volume and gains in strength and hypertrophy. When it comes to muscle growth, there was a clear positive effect for volume, where higher volumes tend to produce superior growth with somewhat of a diminishing returns response. However, for strength gains, a positive effect was still observed, but this seems to plateau with very low volumes, as little as around 5 sets per week. So it seems that quantity of training has a significant positive influence on muscle growth. And while more volume is also beneficial for strength gains, it seems far less effective and plateaus quickly with fairly low volumes. Next let's move on to training quality. This is much more nuanced to define since quality incorporates multiple different components. There are three primary categories when it comes to quality. Acute lifting performance, proximity to failure, and lifting technique. Let's now cover each component. The first is acute lifting performance. This refers to short-term lifting performance within the workout and on each subsequent set. Acute lifting performance is influenced by a few different variables, such as rest periods, frequency, and the exact training strategy used. Longer rest periods and higher frequencies allow us to train in a less fatigued state enhancing lifting performance on subsequent sets. Whereas shorter rest periods and lower frequencies require us to train in a higher fatigue state, resulting in greater performance decrements on subsequent sets. So how does acute lifting performance influence strength and hypertrophy? In terms of strength, lifting performance seems to be highly important. One area where we observe this is with rest periods. More specifically, longer rest periods tend to produce greater strength gains. This was seen in this study, which compared the effects of training with shorter versus longer rest periods. 21 men with at least 6 months lifting experience performed a full body resistance training program for 3 sets of 8-12 to 12 reps, 3 times per week for 8 weeks. Half the subjects trained with 1 minute rest between all sets, while the other half trained with 3 minutes rest. It was found that both groups saw improvements in bench press and back squat 1 rep max, but the long rest group experienced greater gains. We also see similar findings with regards to training frequency. More specifically, when distributing the total workload of a training routine across more sessions per week, we tend to see greater strength outcomes. Going back to this meta-regression, the researchers also investigated the effects of frequency on strength and hypertrophy. It was found that performing the strength lifts a greater number of times per week, even with the same total weekly volumes, typically results in greater strength gains. These findings are likely because longer rest periods and higher frequencies allow us to train in a less fatigued state. This allows performance of each set to be superior, either via lifting heavier average loads or by performing more reps. And the load on the bar seems to be one of, if not the most important variable for strength development. This was seen in this meta-analysis, which analysed the influence of load on strength gains. Load from different studies were categorised into light, defined as anything lighter than a 15 rep max, moderate, defined as between an 8 to 15 rep max, and heavy, defined as an 8 rep max or heavier. It was found that greater strength gains were observed with heavier loads. Heavier loads were superior to light loads, moderate loads were superior to light loads, and heavy loads were superior to moderate loads. But how does acute lifting performance influence muscle growth? In terms of rest periods, they don't seem to be quite as impactful compared with strength. Longer rest periods do tend to promote superior muscle growth in most cases, but only to a fairly small magnitude. This meta-analysis analyzed the influence of rest periods on muscle growth. 
rest periods were categorized into short rest, defined as less than one minute, moderate rest, defined as one to two minutes, long rest, defined as two to three minutes, and very long rest, defined as three minutes or longer. It was found that significant muscle growth can be achieved with all rest period durations. However, there appeared to be a slight benefit favoring moderate and longer rest over short rest. Similar to rest periods, higher frequencies also seem to benefit hypertrophy, but only to a fairly small magnitude. When volume is equated, it doesn't seem to matter all that much whether this is split across fewer versus more sessions per week. Going back to the same meta-regression, the effects of frequency on hypertrophy were far less pronounced. Higher frequencies did show a slight positive trend, but not to the same magnitude as volume. These findings suggest that acute lifting performance doesn't seem to be majorly important for muscle growth. Training in a highly fatigued state doesn't seem to be largely detrimental to muscle growth, provided that we are training close to failure. We also see this with regards to metabolite techniques like pre-exhaust training and drop sets. For example, this study compared the effects of traditional versus pre-exhaust training on muscle growth. 24 untrained men performed three sets of leg press to failure with 75% 1RM two times per week for nine weeks. Half the subjects performed the leg press with no specific intervention, while the other half performed one set of leg extensions to failure with 20% 1RM immediately before the leg press training. As we would expect, total tonnage during the leg press was lower in the pre-exhaust group compared with the traditional training. However, muscle thickness of the quadriceps and glutes increased to a similar magnitude in both groups. Another example can be seen in this study, which compared the effects of traditional versus drop set training on muscle growth. Nine untrained men had each arm assigned to one of either three bicep curl training protocols two to three times per week for eight weeks. One condition involved three sets to failure at 80% 1RM. The second condition involved three sets to failure at 30% 1RM, and the third condition involved performing one set at 80% 1RM to failure, followed immediately by four additional drop sets with a 10-15% to decrease in load, with all drop sets also taken to failure. It was found that biceps cross-sectional area increased similarly in all three conditions, with no notable differences between them. The next form of quality we will discuss is proximity to failure, or how close a set is taken to failure. The best evidence we have on this topic is this meta-regression, which aimed to analyze the relationship between proximity to failure on muscle growth and strength gains. For muscle growth, there was a positive relationship, where training closer to failure results in greater muscle growth. However, for strength, there was essentially no significant influence of proximity to failure for strength gains. So it seems that training close to failure has a positive effect on muscle growth. So this form of quality is of some importance. However, for strength development, how close a set is taken to failure doesn't seem to have all that much of an influence when load on the bar is equated. So this form of quality doesn't really seem to matter. And the third form of quality that we will discuss is lifting technique. Technique has an influence on both muscle growth and strength. However, the specific technique used for either training goal differs. Let's now explore the influence of technique on both training goals. For the purposes of muscle growth, technique influences our ability to stress the target muscle. Essentially, we want to lift in a way that promotes the greatest internal stress on the target muscle group. Here is a brief overview for what is generally considered as the most effective technique strategies to maximize muscle growth. First, you want to control the eccentric tempo. Don't let the weight fall under the forces of gravity. Make sure to actively control the lowering phase to some extent. Make sure to include the most lengthened range of the exercise. This can be achieved by training with a full range of motion, partial reps in a lengthened position, or using lengthened partial reps to extend a set beyond failure. And in terms of movement kinematics, we want to train in a way that requires the target muscle to be the primary contributor to the movement. In other words, ensure the target muscle is actively shortening and lengthening against resistance to move the load. And while these general technique considerations are recommended to maximize muscle growth, how much of an influence do they really have? Well, in most cases, lifting in any manner almost always produces some amount of muscle growth, even if technique isn't ideal. 
For example, this study compared the effects of lifting with a faster versus slower eccentric tempo on muscle growth. 12 untrained adults performed 3 sets of preacher curls 2 times per week for 12 weeks. Half the subjects performed all reps with a 1 second eccentric tempo, while the others trained with 4 second eccentrics. It was found that although the slower eccentrics resulted in greater increases in biceps cross-sectional area, even the faster eccentrics produced significant growth. So it's not like you aren't going to achieve any growth if your technique isn't perfect. It's just that training with effective technique tends to promote slightly superior growth. So I would say that technique is still something we should focus on, but it isn't a variable that is going to have the largest influence on muscle growth within typical hypertrophy style workouts. But what about strength? How does technique influence strength development? Well, the technique used to maximize strength is different to that of hypertrophy. Essentially, the best technique for strength training is the one that allows you to lift the most weight within the constraints of the rules and regulations. We don't really care about which muscles are trained or what length they are trained at, the goal is to simply lift more weight. For example, powerlifters usually squat with a low bar position, more of a forward lean, and only squat to parallel depth. Whereas a lifter trying to maximize quadriceps hypertrophy would probably want to squat as deep as possible while maintaining a more upright position to increase the work demands on the quads. And these technique differences can have a major impact on the loads we are able to lift. And since strength gains are highly specific to the training methods, it makes the most sense to train how you are going to test your strength. So overall, training quality seems to be fairly important for both muscle growth and strength, but the exact type of quality is slightly different. For strength, acute lifting performance and lifting with a technique that permits heavy loads are important. Although how close to failure you train isn't really much of a concern. Whereas for hypertrophy, it seems to be more important to take your sets close to failure with high quality technique. And while acute lifting performance is somewhat important, it doesn't have as much of an impact as the other components of training quality. Now that we have discussed both quality and quantity, the question still remains, which is more important? Well, when it comes to strength, Quality seems to be more important than quantity. More specifically, lifting heavy loads with long rest periods using a technique that allows you to lift heavy are more important than how much volume is performed. And when it comes to muscle growth, both quality and quantity seem to be similarly important. More specifically, taking sets close to failure with effective technique are just as important as the total number of sets you train each muscle group with per week. As a practical recommendation, I would suggest focusing on improving quality to try and maximize the stimulus of each set. And then do as much volume as you can feasibly tolerate and sustain for an extended period of time. Let's now summarize what we have discussed. Training quality in the context of lifting usually refers to volume, or the total number of sets performed for a muscle group or for a specific lift each week. More volume generally benefits both strength and hypertrophy, but it has a more pronounced benefit for muscle growth compared with strength. In terms of training quality, there are a few different components. First of which is acute lifting performance. Lifting in a low fatigue state is highly beneficial for strength development. It is also beneficial for hypertrophy, but to a far lesser extent. Second is proximity to failure. Training closer to failure is beneficial for hypertrophy, but it doesn't really influence strength gains. And technique is important for both goals, but the ideal technique we train with will differ between strength and hypertrophy training. To maximize muscle growth, we want to lift with a controlled eccentric tempo, include the most lengthened range of the exercise, and lift in a way that requires the target muscle to perform the majority of the work. But when training for strength, we want to use the technique which allows you to lift the most weight within the constraints of the rules and regulations. So overall, training quality seems to be more important for strength development, while both quantity and quality seem to be similarly important for muscle growth. Thanks for watching and hopefully you got something out of this video. Check out flowhighperformance.com for online coaching, training templates, ebooks and more.